Put your foot on the brake, put the silver. Put your foot on the brake, put the silver. Put your foot on the brake, put the silver. Throw a button, let's see if, see if that makes you happy. <laughs> Maybe Man. just a little. Woo! That's the reaction we want. Today is the day, but to get the latest and the greatest C8 Corvette content, definitely, definitely go over there, hit that subscribe button, become part of this community, and let's get it back into the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yours was, hey, so we can still use that. It's a good thing I have a 252 shirt on, because I'm doing all the work right now. <laughs> Actually, I am doing the film, uh, Yeah, Let's see how one. Airbird ring. Hey brother. How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. You too. I'm kinda nervous. I have nothing to be nervous about at all. Man, so, it looks I've really been in, good. I've been in your car this morning. Okay. Uh, the EDR works great. Okay. Uh, the, lift, the lift works fine in it. Okay. And, uh, uh, we went on and put the cargo netting in the front okay. and in the back for you. Okay. So it's already in. Nice. Um, I mean, it's really easy to put in, so it's not like anything you'd want to have to do a tutorial over, but we went on and put that in. Okay. Um, so, how's the paperwork situation right now? I don't know. I, all I did was I mailed off what so they you, sent me so yesterday. So, we're waiting for Kerbeck to send back. Yes. Okay. But I don't know how long it will take me to do that. Okay, well, we can push me. There's stuff we can go on and do. I mean, okay. We can knock out. What do you want to do for You excited to see on Speed 252? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't he be super excited about this thing? Look at that. Our first mid-engine car ever. Heck yeah, man. So this is the cover that you've seen on all the cars. Yes. Since yours just comes across the street, we keep it for you. I wouldn't, it's like a one-time cover, but oh, it's, oh. everybody likes to keep everything. So if say, we had the belly button lint off the lady who put the steering wheel, I'm going to keep it. Oh, so okay. If you could decide, this, we keep the plastic off the seats. Okay. All of this is track pieces only. So if you're tracking the car and wanted to put pieces on that would make the car more aerodynamic, that's what that package okay. is. Obviously, we're not going to put that on here. Right. We went on and put the cargo net on this morning. So okay. you've got cargo netting here, and then I'll show you the cargo netting in the front. So, okay. And it just snaps four corners real easy. Okay. Also, back here, since we've got it open, if you ever got locked back here in the trunk, here's the or in the in the its compartment. Yeah. It got a little this little handle right here. It's got, this would release the trunk area. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, right there where, where my where my finger is. Yep. By the way, good work getting the appearance package. Yes, it's good. Though. I that thought about gorgeous. it, man. I love it. I've heard that for sure. Yep. And then of course this one's got the little off the so You only have to get it so far. And then it grabs. Okay. Takes down. Now. Do you want to wait on your friend? Oh no, 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 she said, all she said she'd was like five minutes of footage. Oh, okay. I remind you though, I need to call her and let her know that you're here. But yeah, no, but no she said she'd be very little footage. So. Okay. Where are your parking spots on? Yeah, you'll 
put it up and it'll man leak. So if the battery ever went dead in your car, it's not going to be. Okay. Old, old way, C7 had one up under right. and then it had the little, little release to open the door manually right. from back here. This one doesn't obviously has more stuff back here, so that would not be the case. Uh, I'm going to ask you a dumb question. No. <laughs> you better say yes. <laughs> I like how you preface that one. <laughs> I haven't had anybody say no yet, so I left that in there because of our impending weather. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I'll take it out when I'm when I take it back around. Oh man. Now uh, you'll notice there, right below your left arm, is where I put your 25th anniversary RHC delivery stuff. Awesome. Oh, I appreciate it. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> That's the first so cool. Spot. Now, where's the Zora? The Zora logo is... Oh, it's right here. Yeah, right, got it. Yeah. Yep. It's out on the little, on the little latch there. Okay. The, the seat. Um, you know what? Back and forth, up and down. Okay. Just like the old one. You lean from right here. Oh, thank you. And then your um, lumbar supports right there. They, they switch spaces with them. With that that used to be in the back it used to be a little stubby button okay that's a manual release for your door and you've got one on the passenger side as well so if you got in your car and the battery went dead in here that would be, you'd be able to get out now some of the stuff that hasn't moved like our heads up displays i'll show you that when we turn that on okay so you just push right but um you got to push open your door locks on tilt your mirrors and this you've one got actually, memory seats for two passengers too the mirrors oh, wow. and you have to set them manually you and then adjust them as soon as you get in the car okay um, and save push two windows two different Memory settings over here. Okay. I went on and turned the memory settings on and made sure they work for you. Sweet. Your, this, in fact, this fob is driver two. So the one that's carbon flash, okay. they made the other without the carbon flash. So that's how you can distinguish between both when you when you set them. So if I get in the car, you're saying like if I'm, if I have someone else to drive this car and they're driver two, if they had this key fob, the seat would immediately go back to where they sit in. Is that how it works? Yes, if it's set. Well, now, if you if you had your settings set to seat two, then it's going to go to your settings. So okay. that's why you want the distinguishing. If, if the other fob, which would be driver one, I set, I set all the memory settings to this fob. Okay. Because obviously you separate them, so that way the car knows which fob you want it to. So Ooh. when I set that up this morning, I went on and did your easy ag exit access as well, which okay. For you, it's probably not, you're tall, so it's really not gonna <laughs> do it. It may move the steering wheel, it's not gonna move, but for someone a little smaller, it moves everything out of the way when they okay. open the door. Um, all right, I'm gonna to tell you another stupid thing after I show you this. Uh, <laughs> this is your door handle. Your lock and unlock are right here manually, and both um, entrances to your trunk and your in the in the hood area both okay. unlatch from right here. Okay. Um, okay, it's another dumb question I, I wanna ask. Do you wanna start your car up? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The only thing is make sure you don't rev it up because uh, uh, with, with it not being the break-in period, that could cause okay. warranty stuff. But I'm going to sit this right here. Just put your foot on the brake. Put the silver, silver button. Let's see if, see if that makes you happy. <laughs> Maybe Man. just a little. Woo! That's the reaction we want. <laughs> so, that joke will sound amazing. Your heads up display is right in front of you. You have three buttons for your heads up display. The button on the left that says HUD moves, okay. moves the eye the eye sight. Can you see that okay? Yep, okay. The middle button, the info button, changes what that cluster, you can change what the cluster looks like up okay. there. So it five different settings, I think. And the front to the far right, lights and dim. So if you don't like that, you want to get it the heck out of the way, you can just dim the light. You don't have to look at it. Actually, if you haven't had it, so it looks a little get used to. Yeah. So. Um, your lights are all over here, windshield wipers, which you may have to use on your way home, are over there, same spot. Um, all your cruise control stuff's right here. When you have your favorite save for the radio, you can scroll through right here in front of you. Uh, this is your uh, steering wheel warmer. It's on those cold days when you want to warm up the steering wheel. Got to warm your steering wheel Absolutely. for you. Uh, this will be for your hands-free, anything hands-free you want to do. Okay. And of course, if you were on the phone and wanted to hang up, that'll... that'll cancel everything for you. Okay. Um, all these little tabs right here for the little the air vents. So that's kind of different. Of course your steering wheel's telescopic and that's the little button behind here. It moves in and out. What else? Oh your e-brakes right here. Your emergency your park brake. Uh, okay. So to um, to engage it just push in like so and it'll tell you up here that's engaged. Okay. Now to release it you put your foot on the brake and push in and that'll release the brake for you. Okay. 
Also, they put the dimmer switch for your cluster down here. Now, so it's down here if you want to dim the cluster. Nice. Oh, wow. Cool. Moved it out of the way. So that's, oh, that's 291 miles to E? Yes. Okay. Your fuel's up there, so. Okay. Um, since we got there, I'll show you how to change all that. That's one thing that's a little bit different on this car, the finding all your menu selections. Because, of course, on the C7, you just push the select button, moved it over, and scrolled your way down. Now, watch me moving the arrow. You can go over to each area. So, for your trip A and B, I'm taking the little roller and just rolling down. Right. If you want to reset that, you can reset that from right here by hitting the button, reset, and it sends it back to zero. Nice. And all I'm doing is going through this. You can get fuel economy from right there. Also have trip timer if you want to uh, do that. And of course, if you want to reset, you just hit reset timer. And I'm just, all I'm doing is pushing that little button in the middle okay. and, it, and it rolls as well. Current drive cycle, it's keeping up with what you're doing currently. And we're back there. So now I'm gonna move the air over to the next selection, which is all your performance stuff. So you got your performance tire, or performance timer right there. Uh, your lap timer if, you, if you're running laps on the track. All right. Uh, if you need to check on your G-forces you're pulling in the corner, you've got, you've got that little meter there. Uh, once you get out of here, you're gonna get signal for your XM radio, okay. which you'll be able to see all that from here. Uh, this is gonna have things like uh, your oil and fluid life, your engine life, engine hours, idle hours. Now this one's one, this is where you can play with the settings in your cluster. So right now in the info tile selection, I've got this set as, nope, that's not the one I want. I want to go back, sorry. Display design, that's the one I want. <clears throat> okay, this, this is changes what your cluster looks like. Right okay. now, I've got the cluster linked to your drive mode select, so it'll change with whatever drive mode you're in. So right now we're in touring mode, which is everyday driving mode. Uh, when you go to sport mode, and all I'm doing is clicking the knob, Ooh, it changes your cluster to add some cool so stuff, good. and it opens up those baffles. I just got the chills. <laughs> now, your track cluster's a little different than that. It's, uh, it. And then, of course, you go back the other direction, you have uh, the my mode, which we'll, I'll show you how to set up in a minute, which is your personalized settings. You may be one of these people that like to leave the baffles open no matter what drive mode you're in. And that's where the my mode will come in. You also have a weather mode, which again, may come in handy for you today. One of the big things with the, with the and I can talk about the drive mode select too. The drive mode select changes the car on the fly to whatever conditions you want them for. So. You know, it's changing the car and the way the car handles. So okay. the weather mode, it's decreasing power to the rear tires. That's one of the things it does to help you handle when the road conditions change at first. Okay. You've also got a Z mode on this car, which you've probably heard about, which you can engage right here. Ooh. And again, that's a feature that when we when I go into the settings and show you how to set that, I can show you how to, to personalize that for you. So all you have to hit do is at a touch of a button, have your setup to the way you want it, Okay. which is really good. Let's go back in here. Uh, of course, uh, the info tile selection, <clears throat> you can choose what you want to show on the display. So if you want to have something like battery voltage showing up, I'll just click on that and that'll show up. Um, if I want instant fuel economy, if I want oil pressure, oil temperature, if you want to see the tire status, I can lock those in where those are, are there all the time for you to see. And you can change them to whatever whatever suits you. All right. And I'm just, all I'm doing is taking the wheel and scrolling through the different ones and then just changing which one by clicking on nice. which one you want to keep. So now I want to go, nope, I don't want to go there. I want to get out, please let me out. And then back here, oh, this also has a speed warning. I ain't worried about that <laughs> okay. part. It's disabled right now, but if you wanted to enable that and Mike was riding with you and said, hey, I really don't want you to go over 120, <laughs> then you'd get that annoying ding once you pass over 120. So I'm gonna leave that disabled. I just have a feeling that may be the way you wanna go. So You think I'd ever say that to you? No. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Unless it's a school zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then if you wanted, if you get all these up here and you just wanna simplify it, you can click on that and it erases everything. It just okay. gives you just a simple, 
because for a lot of people, especially ones that are new to this car, this may be a little intimidating. So this just basically gives them, you know, you got a tack and a speedometer. I know what gear I'm in. Very simple stuff if that's if you want to simplify. And I just did that by merely clicking on the button. It takes away all that other stuff. Wow. Um, now, one thing I might recommend, uh, I have the car in link to drive mode right now. Okay. And I would recommend finding one that you like because what's gonna happen, unless you wanna do it this way, the link to drive is changing the cluster to, the, to fit the drive mode, which until you get used to the car, that may, you're down the road, I switch the sport, oh crap, where did this go? Right. So if there's one that you like, that's kind of easy, to, easier to read for you yeah. until you get used to the car, I would recommend locking in one of, one of the clusters, so no matter what drive mode you're in, and, you, and what you can do that is do that in your my mode, okay. and leave it in my mode, and if there's one that you like better than the other, then you've got it up, and no matter what drive mode you're in, I can lock that in out of the link to drive, and that one stays up, so if I change to the tour, no matter what, the one that you select is gonna stay up there, it won't change. Okay, so sweet. that's something, if you wanna do that, you can. Right now, it's in link to drive, so I would have to go in and change it. Okay. But it might, it might again, something, I'll just show you the other ones. You've seen them, but I'll show you them. And there may be, again, one that you like better than the other. So the tour mode one looks like this. And if I do that, it locks in tour mode all the time. Or I can go to the, the track selection, and no matter what drive mode, it'll stay like that. What about sport? Sport is. Do, 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 do. Mm. Let's see. But if I decided to change it in an hour yeah, now, it, it just swap back and forth? Yes, well, no. Right now, if I lock it into sport, like right now, whatever drive mode you change it in, it's going to stay with that that cluster. Okay. So it doesn't change. It, okay. The drive mode will change, but the cluster won't. Okay. And again, that's kind of one of those deals for just yeah. learning, get, just getting in used to the car. Yeah. Because if I put it back to link to drive, every time you change that, it's going to go. The cluster is going to change with whatever drive mode you're okay. in. Okay. So. so right now it's link to drive. Right now I just set it up in sport, but I can change it to oh. link to drive. Yeah, let's do link to drive because I want to see what the other ones when I get okay. used to it. So to drive so now it'll change every time so we're sitting in tour mode okay. it change back to tour Sweet. mode. that's perfect all right of course your paddle shifters are right here so when you go into manual you can shift from right here plus is shifting up minus shifting down uh, your volume control you can do that here on the on the steering wheel Ooh, these feels a lot better than the c7 yeah nice now over you, but I don't want to mess up your your show either. Um, oh, these? Well, I'll, I can. Yeah, I'll you want me to you. get out and let you in this side? If you wouldn't mind. Yeah, just I don't mind at all. And park, reverse, neutral drive. So okay. pretty easy to do, and you'll get used to doing that. Now, traction controls right here. This is for your cameras. You can choose. Right now, it's on the front cameras, and it's pointing down because you got the curb cameras. Okay. And of course, you can change whichever way you want it to look. Um, if some people don't like the, I love the little backups that guide me, but if you just want to go empty stick, you can do, do that as well. But this is where, that's what that camera one is. Um, now, your car has the lift on it. So this car will raise two inches. Just to touch the button. Oh, you have to shut the doors. I was gonna say, let me get footage of it raising. locations um, yeah across the top your hazard lights are up here now okay and this little booger right here I may have been talking to you about this I can't remember it's here Jeremy this is to turn the motion sensors on or off in your car okay so when the fobs away and it's locked obviously you've got motion sensors in here where say if you had the window down somebody reaches in it sets the alarm off well you can you can also turn that on and off from right here so it'll tell you if the motion sensors off or on uh, say you ran to the store to grab something and Mike stayed in the car. Well, you took the fobs with you. 
mic moves a little bit, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna set it's gonna set the alarm off. Or in your case, you're transporting your car on the trailer, your fob is gonna be up with you and where you're where you're hauling. You might do you well to turn that off. So, so that way, doesn't go off. Exactly, because you know a shake or shimmy might set the alarm off. Off topic, is that the same thing in a C7? I traded my C7, had a key in my pocket, and it kept going off every time. Yes, except the sensor, the motion sensor was down there. Okay. You could turn it on and off underneath, about, okay. where, about where the two buttons are. Oh yeah, I know where that is. And yeah. that's, that's a good thing. Now, when you turn the car off and on, so you don't have to worry about turning this back on, the car is gonna default back to the sensor on. Okay, So, cool. Like when you get ready to start the car and take it off the trailer, you're not gonna have to actually turn this, Turn. I gotta turn my motion sensor back on. Sure. No, it'll, it'll default back to that. All right, so all your temperature control right here. Now also, if you're still getting used to pointing forward instead of using the side, you can do that from right here as well. Nice. So if you're still, if you're still trying to get used to this, all your seat warmers and seat coolers are right here. Obviously the sink will make everything in the car the same as the driver's side. Right. Your power switch is here, your fan speeds are right here, and the passenger control for each is right here. Defrost for the front and the rear right here as well. Let's turn that down. But again, if you want to do it from here, you can do it here from as well. Nice. And so uh, this is this will take some getting used to. I mean, this is new, so you might definitely gonna be new to me. My first mid-engine sports car. Now, <laughs> with the with the infotainment system, the big thing to remember with this is if you get lost, go home. We'll take you back to the beginning. You're going to play with this car and you're going to get to places like, how the heck do I get back to my main screen? No matter where you're at, if you hit the house on either one of these, it's going to take break you back home. Okay. Um, let me show you some things in your settings. Actually, do you have your phone on you? Yeah. Let's pair your phone while we got in the car. So when you get your phone out, uh, go ahead and get into your Bluetooth, make sure it's on, and then go and click on Bluetooth. Now, just a second when I go to connect phone, you're going to get a, my, a Chevrolet MyLink come up. Click on that when that comes up on your screen. I'm going to add a phone. In just a second, you'll get a Chevrolet MyLink that shows up right down. Just a second. Being inside, sometimes this takes a little time. Eventually. When you see that, go ahead and click on my Chevy. Okay. Now, you're gonna get a six digit pin. What we want it to do is match up. So basically the car is saying, is this the device you want me to match? Right. So you wanna hit pair and I'm gonna hit pair. And now your phone's connected to the car. Go ahead and allow, that way it gets the contacts in the car too as well. Get oh. on yours. And now your, your phone's paired to the car. So now, if I want to go in and, uh, I don't know. So now, with you connected, it'll it'll ring. You can see where mine was this morning when mm -hmm. I, I disconnected mine. <laughs> I've got it in my pocket, so it kind of knows it's there, but I disconnected it from the car, but I used mine to test yours. So now, any of your contacts or anything like that, you can pull up from here. There. Contacts. It's still loading them. You got a lot of contacts. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was. I was like, maybe I was about to say don't allow because I had so many. I didn't know how many it was going to take or whatever. Oh yeah, look at it. It's, it's it just takes it inside. It takes it a little more time. Now, if I ever want to take them out, do I? Is it possible to take them out? You'll of take them out of your phone. It'll, it, you're, it, basically, your phone's right here. Okay. And to scroll through, obviously, you'll just hit the arrows, or you can go to whatever letter it's under. Okay. Um, now, since it's loaded into the car, now you can do voice commands. So if you wanted to call Mike, the big thing with this, they tell you. When they ask you to, to who, you know, what your command is, call such and such, say it exactly as it is in your context to make it easy for it to find. So if you're calling Alea players, you'll say call Alea players. Okay. Pretty simple. And it's your set, so your phone's paired to it. Now, if you pair multiple devices, the main device is going to be yours. Okay. But of course, um, the other person, if you paired two devices, the car is going to read one, but the other person could take incoming calls. They couldn't make outgoing calls. Okay. So, 
<clears throat> but I'm gonna leave it. You're set now, so you're gonna go. If you ever wanna, if you ever wanna get rid of it, all you have to do to get rid of your phone is obviously hit the hit the this, and it'll ask you if you wanna disconnect. You just disconnect. Okay. If you wanna take it off, if you get a new phone or something. So, but it's connected, so you're good. Uh, settings. This is where you're gonna change stuff in your car. Simple things such as you want to change the clock in your car. If you want to use a different language, uh, any of the phones or Wi-Fi networks, pretty much anything with the car you're going to find here. <laughs> if you need to go back to the chalkboard to erase everything, return to factory settings is right here. This car, very intuitive. If you want to change sounds, voice commands, things like everything right there on the system is going to show that. If I go to vehicle, this is going to this is going to be where you'd set up your Z mode or your My mode. So if I want to change the engine sound to one of these, okay. this is where you would change it. So with the Z mode, if you want to, this is where you'll set it to things you like. The one thing the Z mode has that the my mode you can you have control of the powertrain. So we can set the powertrain up for any of those. Nice. M mode doesn't have that. M mode's gonna have oh no. Those four items that you can change, okay. but this is where you'd set up the personal things for for the M mode. So when you click on M mode, whatever you got set in that, that's what the car is going to do. Same thing with Z mode. Like in Z mode right now, I've got you've got the engine sound track, you've got the steering set to sport, suspension sport, the powertrain track, and the brake response is sport. So it's set up pretty cool. So okay. uh, of course, just like this, if you want to change it over to something else, real simple, real intuitive, real touching. Uh, let's see here. Also in the settings, in the vehicle side, this is where you would change things. The comfort and convenience is a big one too. This is where you change things like uh, if you want your mirrors to fold in when the car, uh, when you unlock the car. I can turn that on or turn that off from here. I'll turn it off. You mean naturally go in and out? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be right. cool. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Oh. Power locks if you want different sounds. Valet mode, this is a fun one. The valet mode basically locks out your personal stuff from somebody that might be in your car that you don't want messing with. Um, every time you do this, the car is gonna ask for a four digit pin and you don't and you change it every time so you don't have to do one and then try to remember if you only use this once a month or something. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four. Enter it's gonna ask me to re-enter it. Now, all your personal stuff is locked out. You can't get in the glove box. Unlike the C7, now the center console locks. Right. And then, of course, like your radio settings, basically the person can drive the car. Now to unlock, unlock, and now the car's back unlocked. Nice. Back to full. Now, that'll move me to something else since we're moving that way. Your poor performance data record, DDR. Now, of course, this is a track feature. Uh, this is telling you that uh, you may some of this can, can be construed in wiretapping as wiretapping in some countries because it does record audio and video. So, let me see if that did. Yeah, so we have no recordings. Good. Very simple to record. You'll see the timer in just a second. I'll stop it. And then we'll play back. It automatically saves it so we can play back the recording. And it and it, it it it'll change with the lighting. The lighting's real bad in here, right. so it's kind of. There's a, a disc already in here. Oh yeah, I, I gave you. A, it goes. The disc goes right here. I went on and got you. Sixteen. So it's got like six hundred and forty minutes left. That's the bar. But yeah, you can you can keep that. The, the difference in the C6 and the, or the C7 and C8. You remember in the the performance data recorder, it was horizontal. Right. And you put it in. This is vertical. It's right here. Where my finger is, mm -hmm. so you load it vertically. Okay. Also on this, this is another cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that. Right. I don't want to keep what I just did. So I at least that. Something that's cool on this, the video overlays. In in the C7, if I wanted to show a customer how to do that, I actually had to run it in each overlay to show you what it looked like. They got really smart in this, and now it'll give you a preview by just pushing on which mode you want to see. Each mode adds something different. Wow. So depending on what 
statistics you're wanting to gather while you're on the track, it'll change with that. So if I go to the track setting and preview that, you can see it's changed a few things, right. variables in that that you can look at and there should be a timing. So that'll change the way the overlay is in, on your recording. So there may be some certain things you want to know what you're doing. Am I, uh, what, how am I throttling? You know, what's my, what am I braking? And, and, and that's, and of course, that, that data will help you get better as a driver right. if you want to. Or you can just leave it with no overlay when you record. Right now, what I'll do is I'll just do none on the video overlay. Timing, none. So that just means that's a clean slate right now. So you, that's, but that's where you would change it. Um, also, I can turn this on for automatic recording. And the reason I would do that is the PDR is, is connected to your valet mode. Okay. So now, if I put your car in valet mode, it'll also record automatically. Mm -hmm. So then you know where the person's driving, what, um, what, the, how fast they went, what, what, are, what are we revving the RPMs up to? Right. You know, if they get manual and start shifting, that now you can set it, configure it right here to where it'll record automatically every time your car's in power. Okay. Which is a cool thing to have. You may never use it, but I mean, it's cool. All right. One thing I want to do before we get out of here is do your OnStar call, like we said. Okay. Um, oh, a couple other things. Now, if you want your fob reader, you just stick it here. The fob reader just goes on the cup holder. Oh, wow. Remember how it used to go in the slot? Right. Now, this is where your fob reader goes. So basically, if the battery goes dead in your fob and you need the car to read the fob, just stick it right here. And it'll do okay. It. It doesn't charge it, but it'll let you operate the car and do your batteries. And also now, in the waterfall here, you have a place to charge your phone. Push it down. There's a charger there. There we go. There it is. And um, turn the lights on back here. I don't know if I can get a good light. Lights are on back here, but I can't see. Right here is where your personalized plaque is for your... Uh, for the, the, Museum oh, yeah. Delivery, the one's got National Corvette Museum Delivery. Right. Um, your name and what, or whatever name yeah. you put on. Uh, that's removable too. It's not glued in, so it's You guys are the only ones today, but uh, some days there will be eight different people. Oh, I'm sure. Six, six well, or eight. That's a fun. I just have to. If you want to do it later, I just want to make sure. That they tell you you're going to get it if you want to set up a camera. Yeah. Like that. um, it's always a good thing for you to do it here. Okay. But, but if, if you don't want to do it, obviously I'm going to. Yeah, we can do it here. We just don't have to record that part. Do what? The own star when we can set it up. Well, I mean, like I said, if you want to do it later, you can do it later. That's up to you. That's about Like I said, if you, I mean, you're at a pretty reputable dealer. If you were, if you were to curve that, I mean, maybe the one that doesn't do a high volume. So it's your good, so I'm not really worried about that. So when you get ready to just hit the other star button, until you're getting your welcome call, you know, they'll probably congratulate you for purchasing your next one. They'll explain, just tell them it's your welcome call, they'll explain what all you get. What they do here. So if you want to, like, you got a sunshade or something, you can switch it. Okay, cool. Um, the roof is no different than the C7. Two points of contact, pops out here. The only difference, now you don't lay it flat because there's an engine there. Right. You just lay it at an angle. Okay. And, and then you'll see the pegs, you just lock it. Okay. Um, the only difference that with two is when you put that in back there, it kills your storage. So pretty much you're going to have to store everything. In That's fine. Um, let's look in, in your front and I'll yeah. show you some things up there. Let me get you getting out, Clarence. All right. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think so far, man? Yeah, I love it, man. I'm, I'm lost for words, but I don't even know what to say, man. I'm just ready to drive, but it's wet outside. <laughs> I understand. Huh? I'm in love, and it's not even mine. <laughs> cool. Now, not only do you have the 
inside to open the, the, the hood and on the fob. But you got it under there too. Okay. It's got a little touch pad. Nice. Just in case I get stuck in here too. It's exactly. <laughs> and it's lit up like a nightlight for you. Um, Ethan went on and put your, your, um, your cargo netting right there for you. And this one actually has some um, has some pockets on the side too. So yeah, yeah. And your battery's right here. So okay. if you get a trickle charger, if you need to charge, the trickle charger's right here. Okay. Um, of course, your windshield. This one to close. It took me a little bit of practice to get, get used to it because you got to do it. It's there's two clicks. You get that click and then hold down and then you're set. Okay. It's a, it, it's a little, it took me a little bit to used to it, actually. Yeah, it pushed pretty firmly. It's just harder than you want to push it. It may just not break it. I think it will, but... Go. I ain't trying to break it, Chris. Oh, you're not going to break it. You're going to be fine, Chris. No, you don't have to... Just, you can take it down real easy. You don't have to do anything hard. Now, just give it a little push to get that first click. Yeah. <laughs> and that second click, hold it down pretty firm. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it was easy. Yeah. So you got to give it a little bit of firm to to, um, to get that. Um, I've hit kind of real basic stuff. Any other questions you have, maybe you want answered. I know a lot of this you're going to get as you drive the car. Right. And comfortable driving the car. But if there's anything that we didn't go over, you want to go over again or anything like that. Um, obviously, feel free to ask any question. I have one no, question. Sure. Oh. But it's gonna be in the back. Oh, so we need to come to the back. Then. Yeah. I've been asked so many times about this. Uh, you don't have to raise that. Where's the rain going? There's a little. Actually, raise that up. Okay, cool. You can see I thought there going. might be something in there to catch the rain, but I wasn't sure. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, of course, the angle is going to help out a little bit, but I mean. The engine compartment, man, I, I mean, we, you're looking right at it, so I don't know. Chris, do we have to take this outside today? It just throws it around in the morning. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've got to take it around to the garage, so, so I can stay under as long as I can, but, and I'll tell you, we can take the pictures inside, so. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it, it's got to go back in the garage tonight. We got another one coming in tomorrow. Part of the assembly process is something called what they call a water torture test. And they blast it. The water test oh, I'm there sure. is, yeah. Yeah, they've got yeah. hundreds of little nozzles that shoots at a rate of 12 gallons a second. Wow. And they run it for about two minutes. Ooh. And it's, and it's uh, if you, I love when people say, well, my Corvette's never seen a drop of water. Is and I'm like, uh, you should come and watch your car get built or do a tour and watch as, it has. as, as it's getting <laughs> deluged. And in some cases, more so, you know, Especially in the early stages when they're testing, I mean, they sure are gonna throw it tech. But yeah, I think it's about three to four hundred different nozzles, about twelve gallons a second. Wow. So, um, and of course, you see your all your oil stuff there. Now, oh, the sticks right there. Is that supposed to be the LED lighting kit? With these two lights here. Yep. Okay. Yes. Just want to make sure I didn't know if it was an all-around thing. Because somebody asked me the other day, like, if I don't get the lighting kit, does it come with any lighting at all for this? As far as I know, everyone that, that, that doesn't have that doesn't have, you know, lighting. Oh, so wow. if you have lighting, you look good with that. You may want to add some. Yeah, yeah I or something. Um, and any of this stuff that you, I mean, I'm sure you want, if you didn't want to keep any of yeah. this, we can, we can toss it. I, just, I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> go when I, get home. I mean, just to figure out what I give me time to think about it, I guess, once I get home. Yeah, that's not, no, no, we, I mean, we, can, we keep everything. A lot of times, if you have more than, husband or wife or significant other comes along they may have a little more stuff and it's the choices of do I throw away the, the one-time cover or is my wife's makeup case <laughs> that's, the cho that's the choices we see on a given day that makes sense um, so this is what we'll do what is it doing outside right now? Is it illusion right now? Or is it, are we, are we in each other? By the way, Clarence. And you have, yeah, take a picture oh, of that. Oh, yeah. And you get to keep the sign, too. No, the whole sign, you get to keep it all. <laughs> and I've got all of your stuff uh, still in the office, so we'll transfer 
I can transfer that once I move into the garage. Okay. Maybe be pretending. <laughs> so Clarence is getting driven in his brand new C8 by Chris at the Corvette Museum around to the garage right now.